Now, as we've added the required data sets for our data composition schema, let's take a closer look at its components. As I mentioned before, the DCS is too vast to fit into our course, but we don't want you to get lost among all these fields and settings. I suggest that we briefly touch upon almost every DCS element to give you a good starting point should you decide to dive deeper into the subject later. So let's start with composition fields. The platform automatically creates the main composition field as we save a data set. Now, I believe that you do remember that there is a flag autofill for this purpose. Here is a table for the main fields of a data composition schema. Now let us talk about the main attributes of this table. The table for the main fields of a data composition schema can have the following attributes. One, path. That's where we put a field name as seen in the data composition schema. We use it in tabs, calculated fields and resources, as well as in composition settings. Also, we can nest one field into another. Include the parental field in the path and the field becomes nested into the parental one. Also, you can use space as a path, but put the space character in square brackets. Number two, title. And that's where we set the field name displayed to users in a report header or in settings for a report option in user mode and in user settings. Three, field restriction gives a collection of flags to limit field visibility and settings. We use it for fields, conditions, groups, and order. Four attribute restriction gives a collection of flags to limit the visibility of field nested attributes in settings. This setting is not available for simple type attributes. Five role that's where we apply the settings required to calculate group incoming and resulting totals correctly. We need these settings to generate virtual table balances and turnovers within accumulation registers as well as virtual tables within accounting registers. Six, presentation expression. It's where we put an expression for redefining the standard presentation of the field. Here we can use any of the available composition fields, internal DCS functions and export functions of common modules. Seven, ordering expressions. Allow redefining parameters for ordering to items by field. If we select to order items by a field that comes with an ordering expression, the platform applies the ordering per the expression, ignoring parameters set in composition settings. Number eight, hierarchy check, data set, and hierarchy check parameter. It's where we specify a data set and a parameter that is to be passed into this data set to correctly apply filters in composition settings for cases of reports with non-standard hierarchy. Number nine, value type, is where we specify the field type for composite types. 10, available values area, is where we set available values to be used when filtering by a specific field in composition settings. The list can contain any value that can be selected. Before you can pick a value, you need to specify the field value type. Appearance, is where we can define field appearance, including color, font, format, position, and similar. So as you see, there are many settings, but usually we don't need them. For our report to operate, it's enough to use conditions specified in the query dataset. So we leave these fields as is. Nevertheless, please feel free to dig into the subject yourself. Now let's proceed to discuss tab dataset links. Now basically, we need these tabs to apply additional conditions to the dataset received from a query. In other words, we apply a new query to tables resulting from the previous query. Yes, there can be a lot of tables, and this is why I'd like to specifically show how dataset links operate. So create an individual report, report two, create a data composition schema for it, and add to the schema two reports as datasets. The first query retrieves the product name, its price, and a reference to the document a recorder from information register price change. The second query retrieves a reference to document purchases, contractor name and total for the document table. Now we need to establish links between the datasets. 
We picked the first data set as the link source and the second one as the link target. Pick field recorder from the first data set as the source expression and field ref from the second data set as the target expression. As we're currently learning just the basics of data composition schema, we skip the other fields. If you do feel a bit lost, don't worry. We are getting to where you will see the whole picture. Switch to tab settings and go straight to the settings wizard. Here we talk only about those fields that we need for our report. Note that we don't pick all fields, but the ones we need, that all the fields in both datasets are available. So here's the report. As mentioned earlier, in all those tabs, we, uh, so to say, create queries to the tables that we've created in tab datasets. Basically, dataset links are nothing else but some kind of left join for our datasets. We've picked the left and the right table and specified the parameter that defines the join type. As for fields, we pick them in tab settings. In the next part, we'll touch upon other pages relating to the data composition schema.